If you've been holding out for a worthy successor to the Nikon Z5, your patience might soon pay off. The Nikon Z5 Mark II, often referred to as the Z5 II, is making its way toward launch, and with new information surfacing, there's quite a bit to unpack. At first glance, Nikon seems to be playing it safe, sticking to a tried and true formula. However, some of the refinements might be just what casual enthusiasts and semi-pros have been waiting for. But the big question remains, are these changes meaningful enough to justify an upgrade? Let's take a deep dive into everything we know so far about the Nikon Z5 Mark II and explore whether it can hold its own in today's fiercely competitive mirrorless camera market. At the heart of the Nikon Z5 Mark II is a 24.5 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. On paper, this is very much in line with what we saw in the original Z5, and some might argue that Nikon missed an opportunity here to raise the resolution, especially since rival brands are pushing past the 30 megapixel threshold in the same price category. That said, this resolution is still more than adequate for most use cases, from portrait and landscape photography to casual video production. What really sets the Z5 Mark II apart, however, is the addition of Nikon's latest XPET 7 image processor. This chip has already proven itself in higher-end models like the Z8 and Z9, and its inclusion here signals a strong focus on improving performance rather than just chasing specs. The new processor brings with it significant advantages, faster data processing, improved image quality, and notably better noise control, especially in low-light environments. For those who often shoot at night or in dim conditions, this could result in noticeably cleaner and sharper images. It's a welcome refinement, even if not revolutionary. In essence, the sensor remains familiar, but the processing power has taken a leap forward. For first-time buyers entering Nikon's full-frame mirrorless ecosystem, this is a solid offering. However, if you're already using the original Z5, you might find these updates more iterative than transformative. Autofocus performance is another area where Nikon has clearly worked to make the Z5 Mark II more competitive. The new model is said to feature a 273-point hybrid autofocus system, complete with real-time eye detection and animal tracking. This is a considerable step up from the original Z5, which, while competent, wasn't the quickest or most reliable in high-speed or complex lighting scenarios. With the XPET 7 processor on board, users can expect snappier and more accurate focusing. This should benefit anyone who photographs fast-moving subjects, such as athletes, pets, or wildlife. The autofocus improvements are especially important now that Nikon is competing against Sony and Canon, brands known for setting the bar high in this department. Of course, real-world testing will ultimately determine whether Nikon's upgrades are truly on par with the competition, but the specs are promising. Another key consideration is how well this new autofocus system handles in video mode. Nikon has made strides in this area recently, but consistency across both photo and video modes is critical. Will the tracking remain fast and sticky in 4K video? Will it work well in challenging lighting conditions? These are important questions potential buyers will need answered. The Nikon Z5 Mark II does offer some welcome improvements for video shooters, but it stops short of a full-fledged upgrade. The camera supports 4K video recording at 30 frames per second and 1080p at up to 120 frames per second, making it a decent choice for those interested in slow-motion footage or casual filmmaking. However, there's a catch that might disappoint content creators, the lack of 4K at 60fps. In 2025, 4K 60p is quickly becoming a standard feature among competing models in the same price bracket. Not having it puts the Z5 Mark II at a slight disadvantage for videographers who want smoother motion, especially for professional work like event coverage, YouTube content creation, or cinematic sequences. Still, there are some redeeming qualities for hybrid shooters. The Z5 Mark II includes 5-axis in-body image stabilization, which is a game-changer for handheld shooting. Whether you're vlogging, recording B-roll, or capturing quick clips without a gimbal, IBIS can make a big difference in stability and overall quality. For photographers who occasionally dabble in video, this camera might strike a comfortable balance. However, serious videographers may find themselves wishing for more advanced features like higher bit rates, 10-bit internal recording, or more flexible codec options. Physically, the Z5 Mark II doesn't stray far from its predecessor, but there are some notable improvements. The electronic viewfinder retains its 3.69 million dot OLED display, delivering clear, crisp visuals that are especially helpful in bright outdoor environments. While the resolution hasn't changed, the OLED technology ensures better color accuracy and responsiveness, making it a dependable tool for composing shots. 
Perhaps one of the most appreciated upgrades comes in the form of a fully articulating 3.2-inch LCD touchscreen. Unlike the original Z5's tilting screen, which was great for low and high angles but not for vlogging or self-recording, the articulating screen provides much greater flexibility. It's ideal for content creators who shoot from various perspectives or need to film themselves. Whether you're doing handheld shooting, mounting the camera on a tripod, or setting up tricky angles, this screen offers much needed freedom. One area worth watching is the touchscreen interface itself. In previous Nikon models, the touchscreen functionality was somewhat limited compared to rivals like Canon, which offer deeper menu navigation and focus control through touch. If Nikon has enhanced this experience in the Z5 Mark II, it will be a small but significant quality of life improvement. Another welcome update is the inclusion of dual UHS-2 SD card slots. This will be a huge plus for professionals and enthusiasts alike who want real-time backups or extended shooting sessions without worrying about swapping cards mid-shoot. It's also helpful for separating photo and video files or using overflow recording when one card fills up. Charging and connectivity have also been brought up to modern standards. The Z5 Mark II supports USB-C charging, which is now a requirement under new EU regulations. This means you can charge the camera on the go with a power bank or standard USB-C cable, reducing the need to carry extra adapters when traveling. It's a small but meaningful change for anyone who values convenience and mobility. Now comes the million-dollar question, is the Nikon Z5 Mark II worth upgrading to? For current Z5 users, the answer might be a hesitant maybe. The improvements are thoughtful and make for a smoother overall experience, but they don't represent a massive leap forward. The sensor remains unchanged, and while performance enhancements are always welcome, they may not be enough to warrant a full upgrade unless you're especially interested in the new autofocus system or the articulating screen. On the other hand, for those entering the full-frame mirrorless world for the first time, the Nikon Z5 Mark II is shaping up to be a compelling option. It offers a well-rounded feature set, solid performance, and Nikon's excellent color science, all wrapped in a user-friendly package. As a hybrid camera that caters to both photography and occasional video use, it strikes a nice balance. That said, competition is fierce. Canon's EOS R8 and Sony's A7C2 are two key rivals in this segment, and both offer strong feature sets, some with higher video frame rates and more advanced AF capabilities. Nikon will need to price the Z5 Mark II strategically to make it an appealing choice among these alternatives. A competitive price point could make all the difference in helping it carve out a space in the crowded market. As of now, Nikon is expected to officially announce the Z5 Mark II sometime in the summer of 2025, most likely before August. This timing aligns with the high demand season and gives Nikon enough room to promote the camera without clashing with other releases in their lineup. If you've been holding out for a refresh to the Z5, you might not have to wait much longer. In conclusion, the Nikon Z5 Mark II is a thoughtful update that fine-tunes what already worked well in its predecessor. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it adds meaningful improvements in processing power, autofocus, screen articulation, and overall usability. For newcomers to Nikon Z system, it's a reliable and capable full-frame mirrorless camera. For existing Z5 users, the decision will hinge on how much value they place on refinements over revolutionary changes. What do you think about the Nikon Z5 Mark II? Are these updates enough to spark your interest, or were you hoping for something a bit more groundbreaking? Let us know your thoughts, and if you're interested in more detailed camera breakdowns like this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.